Torghast, what a time it has had. Patch 9.1 actually revamps it, but it does maintain its positioning within the game, with it still being tied to legendary gear acquisition, though Blizzard have actually added many more cosmetics. So in today's guide, you're going to learn all that you need to know about this new version of Torghast, as well as how you can get the very highest scores, which of course is what you're going to need to actually progress in this video that is brought to you by our patrons, where we have just posted another two podcasts with Lore Walking Episode 3 well on its way. And of course, you also get other things like a big old pack of physical loot and the daily briefing. The support has been awesome. It's allowed us to accelerate uh, plans for very new and shiny types of content and grow our team as well. So patrons, massive thank you. The link's down below to join. Let's go. There is now no death counter. Runs actually last for five floors instead of the old six. There are four new layers. There's layers nine through 12. And the whole thing has been redesigned around the new score system, which we're going to explain and really break down to help you later on. There's also the new empowerment bar that will fill up as you defeat enemies and click items. And whenever that is filled up, you will get an extra action button, which you can use to activate empowered mode, which, uh, well, by default will buff you a little bit, but also increase your score. But it's upgradable, along with many other things, by the box of many things, which is a new talent tree for Torghast. So that's your gameplay TLDR. Let's actually break this thing down in detail and work out how we can get you the maximum score runs, unlock the highest layers of Torghast, and access the Adamant Vaults. Now, one thing for uh, dates and things, layer 9 is available on patch week, and layers 10 through 12 are unlocked later on. Let's dive into the new score system and how you can best use it. What you do in a Torghast run will earn you score. Much of the score comes from completeness, which is basically the percentage of killable and clickable things that you, well, kill and click. And then also time, which is how fast you go. Broadly, you'll either go fast with less completion or slower with a bit more completion. But that's actually not all because there's also score bonuses. There's quite a lot here, so I'm going to break down each aspect of the scoring system. Each percentage of completion will earn you one point. So kill everything you see, click everything that you see, smash every pot that you see. But don't take too long because time is also important you will get up to 50 extra points for beating the par time. So it feels a little bit Mythic Plus-ish, but it is more lenient. Then there is Empowerment. You can earn up to 50 points based on what percentage of your run you spend in the Empowered State. 2% of your run equals 1 point. And if you spend 95% of your run Empowered, that will earn you 50 points. So... These categories of score are your bread and butter, and they'll all be made a bit easier as you progress your way through the talent tree. That said, they're far from the only way to earn score, so let's cover the score bonuses that you can get. And these are really things to keep in mind as you play. So as an example, Annihilator earns you 20 points for killing a boss in under 20 seconds, while Executioner is 10 points for killing a boss in under 40 seconds. If you kill two elites within 10 seconds, you'll get the Daredevil for 10 points. So already, I think you can see here how planning your pulls and your character's cooldowns can really get you quite a bit more score. So with that in mind, let's go through the rest. Collector is for earning 30 powers and nets you 10 points. Hoarder is for exiting Torghast for finishing your run with 500 Phantasma. So basically, it gets you 10 points in return for not spending your resources, which of course will make your run a bit harder. Popper, then, is for selecting zero epic anima powers. Pillager is for destroying 90% of the ashen flak trees. Plunderer is for opening chests. Robber is for robbing a broker. Rescuer is for helping friendly NPCs who you'll find. And Savior is for saving all of the souls that you'll find in a run. Then Speed Demon is a whopping 30 points for finishing within 60% of the part time, while Speedy is for completing within the part time. And then Trap Master is for not taking trap damage. That's what we know so far, there could be a few extras. 
So basically, keep these things in mind when you're doing your run, right? So if you're going to be going for a completeness run, well, you're going to want to think, if I'm being complete, does that mean I've got time to pull two rare mobs, or to get enough power in my character that I can defeat a boss within 20 seconds, or destroy all the ashen phylacteries, or maybe rob a broker? You could do all those things in a completeness run to get some more score. Whereas, of course, if you're going for a really, really speedy run, then maybe you could do a speed run while not picking up uh, an epic anima power. Perhaps something like that. Maybe even go for speed demon, right? So basically, understanding these things and being able to apply them to your runs on the fly, that is how you're actually going to get good scores. So work out what things to target on completionist run versus a speed-focused run. Now, do note that every death will lose you 20 points, so do not die. Now, once you have completed your run, you'll get a rating between 1 and 5 stars. Though Blizzard says gems, I just think, you know, five stars, right? It helps you understand what it is. But we'll use gems for the rest of the video. So every 40 score will get you one gem. So for a flawless five gem run, you would need a score of 200 or above. Now, this is important for a few things. To unlock the next layer of Torghast, which you will want to do to, of course, get Soul Cinders, you will need to complete a four gem run of the previous layer. And then, to access the Adamant Vaults, which is a new bonus floor, well, that is something you get access to after your run, if you get five gems. And if you have unlocked the Adamant Vaults via Torgas Upgrade Tree, which we will cover soon. So now that you understand score, you'll of course know that 50 score, up to 50 anyway, comes from being empowered. So let's dive into that empowered bar. It is uh, both new and pretty damn important. Essentially, everything that you do will fill up that bar, and once it is filled past the little marker, it will spawn an extra action button on your UI. Pressing that button will make you or your party empowered. Now, of course, the more full that bar is, the longer your empowerment will last. Now, what's key here is that there are a number of box of many things upgrades and anima cells that will alter your empowered buff, making it far more potent. And of course, as you know from the scoring section, being empowered for longer is, of course, great for your score directly. And if your empowerment is more powerful, then that will make you more powerful, which will help you finish your run faster, which will get you more score. So basically, using this right is going to be very important. And it just comes down to using it right, not squandering it within a run. I mean, yeah, you know, don't pop it and then just sit around in your ass for a while. You know, basically a whole bunch of the generally playing wow good common sense applies here and the empowerment bar will help you make the most of that. Well, now that you know how scoring and the empowerment bar works, it's time to talk about the box of many things, which is our new talent tree. So you basically will earn tower knowledge from doing Torghast runs. Tower knowledge is a seasonally capped currency with its cap increasing each week. And of course, that is what you spend in the box of many things for your upgrades. Now the box itself is upgraded via an NPC who will spawn in at the end of a run. So you'll be able to get it like in your first Torghast run in the new patch. So basically there'll be an NPC, it's at the end of a run, you'll be grant. Now then, what is in the box? The answer is many things. Examples do include starting runs with more blessings and with less torments. Oh yeah, blessings and torments. So torments are negative affixes with more and more of them being active on higher layers of Torghast. And then blessings are positive buffs. Things like say doing, well, <laughs> but you know, doing 30% more damage uh, with bosses or getting way more anima cells, things like that. So basically they're really strong. Other upgrades then include making the empowered buff more powerful, having a larger anima power selection, and a whole bunch of other things. So if tower knowledge is a limited currency, then you might be wondering what things to spend it on. Well, from a quick look through, here are my recommendations. The first thing to do is to get three ranks in the row one blessing upgrade, because starting with blessings is just super powerful. I'd also say that Efficient Looter is a really good one because auto-looting will save you time and that is good for your score. 
For Road 2 then, uh, Freed from Torment and Empowered Perseverance are great for just ease and score, while Row 3's Undeterred and Inexplicable Power both make bosses easier which is really good and might help you get those uh, score bonuses for defeating bosses quickly. Row 3 then also contains the Adamant Vaults upgrade, or unlock even, so that's not going to be relevant to player power, but it is relevant for cosmetics and, of course, earning more tower knowledge in your runs. Row 4 is odd then, with one power that gives death a chance to not hurt your score and another power that decreases damage taken from traps. And those are certainly handy, potentially useful things, but I would probably just go for the stamina buff. Uh, I mean, generally I'd say just play around the traps and don't get hit. Spend your points elsewhere if you're you know, putting things in that row. I mean, unless traps are really a struggle, in which case 40% less damage from traps will of course be great. Row 5 has also got great powers though, so unflinching is big for the harder layers and elite slayer will be great for your empowered scoring. Basically, it'll make elites give you, um, you know, way more uh, empowerment when you kill them. Anima Plundered is uh, just okay in comparison, only gives you so much during a run. The final row is very powerful though, containing an Anima Power Select uh, reroll, so you'll be able to reroll your selection, which uh, could be great for targeting the build that you want, and uh, also one that just gives you a very, very big, like, pulsating AoE when you're in the empowered state, which, uh, yeah, can be really good. But basically, as you can see here, these are going to stack up, but it is going to take weeks to unlock the true power of the box of many things, because you can only, uh, you can only earn so much tower knowledge per week. And then, of course, it's a seasonally capped currency as well, with that cap increasing each week. So that's basically how that one works. The Adamant Vaults, then. What are they? Well, if you unlock them in the box of many things, and you also get a five-gem run, then you'll be able to do two more Torgas floors. Just what you wanted. <laughs> one of them is a standard floor, and the final one is a boss floor, but there is a broker vendor who is uh, just before the boss, and that vendor will sell you, uh, well, nice things, like moth-themed cosmetic back pieces for a thousand Phantasma each. Also, at least that, well, we think anyway for live, um, mobs killed within the vaults actually have a chance to drop socket and conduit upgrade items, so uh, yeah, certainly kill them all if you can. Now, there's also a bunch of new cosmetics, uh, which, in addition to being sold by broker vendors, actually do drop from enemies in the Adamant Vault. So, it's a handy extra little thing, even though it's not necessary or core to player power, unless you're really going for those uh, Sock and Conduit upgrades. I should mention Soul, Cinders, and Ash. So the primary reward of Torghast is Soul, Cinders, at least for layers 9 through 12, and that's just this patch's version of Soul, Ash. Now, Soul, Ash still does drop from all of this stuff, and it's still only used for rank 1 through 4 legendaries, but it does drop 50% more now, with repeat runs actually still dropping a small amount of Ash. But the Soul Cinders are the real deal. Layer 9 drops 60, 10 drops 50, 11 drops 40, and 12 drops 30. So what that basically means is that clearing both weekly wings at layer 12 will get you 360 Soul Cinders and 2060 Soul Ash. Now add to that an extra 150 Soul Cinders from the events in the Maw, and that is 510 Cinders per week, meaning it'll take three weeks to upgrade to rank 5 and four to upgrade to rank 6 with the greatly increased Soul Ash acquisition, allowing you to craft rank one through four legendaries quite a bit faster indeed. What about the cosmetic rewards then? Well, the ultimate cosmetic is the really epic looking Moss Worn Charger, which is for getting a flawless five gem run of each wing at layer 12. So yes, this is quite hard. You will need many of the upgrades from the box of many things, for this one and quite a bit of just game feel for Torghast, which you'll get as you do your weekly runs. Now there are then the moth-themed back pieces that we covered earlier. These are purchasable for 1000 Phantasma, so uh, yeah, do save up during your runs if you're gunning for those. Um, and of course, also think you'll get into the Adamant Vault. Now these also, these back pieces, they do drop from the Tormentors of Torghast event in the Maw, so bear that in mind. Now, there are also many cosmetic shoulder piece, uh, pieces. Now, uh, these are in a few different categories. So there are light gray ones, gold ones, 
blue-gray ones and dark blue-gray ones. Now, these do drop from Adamant Vault NPCs, and they're also sold by broker vendors, where they cost 300 Phantasma. Many transmog options here. And then finally, there is the Experimental Anima Cell. That's a toy that costs 200 Phantasma and is purchased from The Knot, who is a broker who you'll find on floor 5 of layer 9 through 12 Torghast runs. Whew, okay, there you go. That is the new Torghast changes, the additions, and basically how you can use the scoring system. Well, I mean, basically the scoring system. It's not like there's any, you know, magic strategy. It's just if you understand the scoring system, you'll be able to play to your strengths and get a good score, and basically it'll just come down to that. So, I hope this has got you caught up to speed for the new patch. If you found this useful, be sure to head over to the Patreon, where we've got a whole bunch of uh, content. Many podcasts going on, and... Uh, cool stuff coming, plus some physical loot. So, links down below to join. That's it for me. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.